Okay. All right. Hi, everybody. I've, uh, I'm Oliver. I've been attending this club for a little while now, and um, well, I figured this is a skill I have that I could share. So, three modeling. To start off, I considered putting a slide here explaining what 3D modeling is, but I figured it'd be better if I just say it because it's kind of hard to plan that out. Basically, any image you see in a video game that's um, you know, a 3D video game or uh, a movie that has some kind of special effects made by a computer, all of that uses 3D models. It's basically just the backbone upon which we create 3D images in computers which I'll go into detail explaining. So, when you want to get started, what software should you use? These are the three that, well, these are three of the four that I have experience with. The first is Autodesk Maya. Now, Maya is the industry standard program that, like, all the game companies use, all the movie companies use, and they use it to make games, special effects, all that kind of stuff. It's, um... Very feature complete, because it's industry standard, of course. Um, but it has some hiccups here and there, like it, uh, it'll crash randomly, you'll lose your work, uh, it hates rendering, and certain more complex modeling you can do, if you are a beginner, it hates. Because if you're a beginner, sometimes you, to do something easier, you tax the system a little bit more, and Maya hates that. It absolutely hates that. So, it's not great for beginners. It was the first one I learned, which I regret it being the first one I learned. But, yeah, take it from me, not a great one to start with. Um, what should also scare you off is that it's a software as a service, so you have to pay for it, like, you know, continually. Um, now, the second one is the second program I learned, Modo. It's actually quite a nice piece of software. It's the software that we use here at Bergen that I learned in the 3D animation class. And um, also very feature complete, but also costs money, of course. It's software as a service, just like Maya. However, I feel that this one's more beginner friendly, and it uh, definitely has a better UI. Um, Blender is the ideal option for beginners. It's open source, so it'll always be free. And it, uh, it's starting to get close to what the industry standard programs like Maya and, in a smaller way, Modo, have. Um, it's getting close to rivaling them in all aspects. But to beginners and to hobbyists, like I was in the 3D animations uh, program. I transferred out to cybersecurity, so I don't do it anymore, so now I just have this skill and use it as a hobby. So to me, hobbyists and beginners, Blender is the best option because it's free and it doesn't complicate things, basically. These two programs assume that you know stuff. This one doesn't as much. Um, so the UI is much better designed around beginners and stuff like that. Um, yeah, like I said, I recommend it for personal use and for practicing. Um, and before we go ahead with the presentation, there's one more software I want to show, just for giggles. This one is a really, really old piece of software. This is called Soft Image. Now, this one was uh, 3D modeling software used for very like early 2000s games and stuff like that, and me having the skill and being a hobbyist, I mod a lot of early 2000s games to use this, you know, the 3D model and stuff. And for some of them, they're so old that they use an old engine and you have to use a program like this. So, if you want to get involved in modding a game as a hobby through this, I recommend you start with Blender and you just model, you don't implement anything yet because that's the program you're going to learn stuff in. Because later down the line, you might have to not enjoy working with a program like this. <laughs> All right. 
Now, as I said about Maya, it's been used in many blockbuster projects, big films like Avatar and Spider-Man, and uh, big games like Halo, um, and even the TV show, The Clone Wars, if you know that, animated the whole thing in that. It's uh, nice software, not very friendly for beginners. Okay, now getting into actually how you model. Before we can model, there are some very basic, fundamental things we need to understand. There's two sets of threes, two sets of three concepts that you need to know. The first being how you select stuff. So this is an example of a very rudimentary 3D model of a pyramid. Now it has three facets that make up its entire design. The first is a vertex, which is just a little point at any space and time, just a little, little dot. That's all it is. It's a dot that has data about where it is on a Y, X, and Z axis. Now, if you have, let's say you have the one vertice here, and you have another one over here. So then if they're connected, what you have between them is an edge. That's the line that connects vertices. So now let's say you have a third vertice over here. So you have two vertices, three vertices, an edge here, then you have two edges between them. When you have three edges that connect to each other, that's when you get a face, which is the space between all three edges and vertices that make up a solid surface on the 3D model. So as you can see, there's a vertex that just vertexes here, 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 here. There's an edge, 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 and the spaces between our faces. So those are all of the basic things that make up a model. Now for the types of manipulation, this is basically all the tools, the basic tools that you use to move this stuff around to get it to look the way you want. First one is the move tool or the transform tool if you want to get fancy. Basically all that does is it takes the selection of, because you can select any of these three uh, types of uh, uh, assets that make up this. You can select a vertice, you can select a face, or you can select an edge. So once you have one of those things selected, you can use the transform tool. Basically what that does is it just moves it around. You can use the handle here to move it up and down the y-axis. You can use the handle here to move it up and, oh wait, yeah, you can move this one to make it go uh, x-axis, and this one on the z-axis. While you manipulate models, you want to make sure that you're always adjusting your camera so that you can, you know, mess with them the best that you can. I'll explain uh, further in detail on the controls once we're past the presentation and we're on the actual modeling portion of today's workshop. Um, the second tool is rotation. This one might look a little bit messy, but uh, basically it's the same thing as this except, well, this, this cube is, I mean, this sphere is kind of a weird one. Whoever made this one had a, has a camera angle that makes them all look like they're very close together. But it's the same principle. There is a circle that you can move in uh, all three of the axes and thus move whatever portion of the model you have selected in that way. And same applies for scale. Um, you know, all the different axes, and um, this is the perfect time to talk about the middle portion, or it's usually yellow in any of these tools. For the scale tool, take this, and you hold this down, and you move it. That's everything. That's everything that you have selected in every direction. So, for example, it's most useful for if you want to select the entire model, and then you grab this, and you move it out, that'll make the entire model bigger or smaller, depending on which way you move it. Um, the, yellow, the yellow tool on Rotate is one of the most useless things ever in all of the programs. I'm sorry, it sucks. Basically, rotation is, why don't we move what we have selected in every axis at once, rotating? You get no control, basically, and basically you're just eyeballing it based on your camera angle. It sucks. Don't do it. 
Um, same thing with the move tool. The move tool has a little yellow box in there. Don't use it. Because what it's going to do is it's going to, you know, you're going to use it in all axes at once, and the computer isn't going to know what you mean because you're not telling it what axes at a time. Now, you might be thinking, if these things are so useless on these two, why do they exist? Well, it's because they are useful only in a certain way. So, inside this yellow box, if you click the middle and you move it around, the useless stuff happens. You don't want that. However, if you do it in a spot that's, let's say, between one of these two axes, if you do this one, which is between the Z and the X, then you'll freehand it along only the Z and X axes at the same time. Same applies for any corner of this. Just don't use the middle. The middle part's useless. The sides are good. Uh, I don't think I've ever found a use for the yellow on rotate. Because I don't think that that kind of thing has that function. Um, I don't think that exists for scale. I could be wrong, but I don't think it does. So yeah, that's the basic um, points of interest on a model, what makes up a model, and the basic tools for manipulating one. Actually, you know what, before we go on, I can give you a little demonstration of that, probably better. So if you guys have Blender up, and you're going to use Blender later, I highly recommend that you go into the preferences, which you can find in Edit, Preferences, and Key Map right here. You want to change this key map to industry compatible. You don't want to use the Blender keys because if you do, your knowledge is not transferable. If you have it on industry compatible controls, then you know how to use a program like Maya or Modo. But wouldn't all Blender tutorials use the Blender key maps? Possibly, yeah. But I highly recommend, it might be a little bit more difficult to learn because of that. But I highly recommend taking that extra step and thinking about if you need to print out a little map of what the Blender keys are compared with what the industry compatible keys are, just do it. If you plan on taking this any further than just messing around in Blender, I highly recommend you do it because if you learn it this way with the Blender keys, you're stuck in Blender and then you have to relearn it. Yeah, what's up? Uh, so what about Blender or is useful What about Blender is useful? It's free. Yeah, Well, I mean, it's a 3D modeling software that lets you, you know, build stuff for games or for special effects for movies, all this kind of stuff. 3D modeling has lots of applications. It's pretty much anything we have, like, on the computer. Um, but pretty much the useful thing about Blender is that it's open source. So it's free of charge, uh, whereas all the other uh, programs I just talked about are uh, software as a service, which means you have to spend money on them incrementally. They're a little bit more feature complete, but Blender is more beginner accessible, and it's free forever. So, as I was saying about the, um, the basic tools and manipulations, here's a little cube. Whenever you go into 3D modeling software, usually there's a little cube that pops up as your default option. So I'm going to look around. You can see it from all different angles. I can pan. And on the side here, we can see some examples of tools. So we have the move tool here. If I click it, I get that little handle that popped up before. I can move it in all these different directions. I can move it up to the side, to the other side, to the back. Now, I'm noticing now that Blender actually has something that's really nice. It has handles for you, so it makes it more obvious what axes you're uh, going on. So the middle one is any axis. Course. Not very useful, as I mentioned. However, if you notice between the arrows here, there are extra handles. That's what those are. That's the function I was telling you guys about on the in-between of the square in the middle. It just makes it a little bit easier to see something a bit more pronounced for you to grab onto. Very useful. Um, and there's rotation, which is pretty much exactly as it uh, was shown in the presentation. And there's scale, which I can scale it that way, I can scale it this way, I can scale it that way. And this one has those handles in between as well for the different axes. 
And then the middle one is just everything at once. You get right in the middle of hey, there you go. But that's an entire object of manipulation. Which is nice for starting out, but when you actually want to make a model of something, you need to manipulate its parts. So up here, I'm in object mode right now. That means that I'm manipulating the object as a whole. If I go down here, I can go into edit mode. And in edit mode, I can select, see up here, these three things where my mouse is. This is vertice mode, this is edge mode, and this is face mode. You can select the different components of a model using this. So, see in vertice mode, the little dots at all the corners are very pronounced and you can see them better. Now you can select different ones by holding down shift and stuff. If you want to select more, basic computer principles apply and then I can move them. I can move those spots only on the model. Only what I have selected. And boom, you get more of an interesting shape that way. Or, let's say, I'll rotate them. And it's oh, wow. only those spots that get rotated. Oh, wow. Which creates a more interesting shape. Or, I don't think scaling will do... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I can shoot them all out with scaling. I can go in all different directions with scaling. Now for an example of what edges will do if you manipulate them. The edges are all coming out. Now in rotation, the whole sides come over because of the edges. And as you can see, the edges on the other side are staying as is, but they're, mo they're melding to um, a position um, relative to what I'm doing. Basically, they're, they're staying with the edges that I'm manipulating just enough to keep shape because I'm not actually manipulating them as a whole first. Now faces, whole side like that, just a whole thing. And as you can see, looks like a trapezoid. Yeah, you can do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, basically, when you learn how to, okay. what happens when you go like? Oh yeah, okay, that's a good that's a good question. So sometimes when you go a little too far, or there aren't enough points to show the very complicated shape that you're trying to make, the computer. When it looks weird like that, when there's like a little black space in there, or if it looks all scrunched up when you do that, that's because the computer is trying to guess what the hell you're trying to make. <laughs> and sometimes you confuse it, and it does not know what you're trying to make. And so this is its guess. That's its guess when I do something that makes no sense. Can you move around? Can you move around, please? Oh, yeah, I can, I can move it around. That's its guess. Oh, wow. When I move it in a way that it should not be possible to move. And uh, big surprise, that won't 3D print. <laughs> that won't 3D print correctly at all. It won't render correctly either. So yeah, those are the basics of model manipulation as shown in the program. There's probably one other thing I should mention too. I'm not going to demonstrate it unless we need to later, because it's a little bit more of an advanced technique, but there's two tools that will be eternally useful to you guys when modeling. One is called, um, has different names in every soft, uh, software I've used. Usually it's called like edge cutting or splitting or knife, stuff like that. Basically what it is, it's a little tool that lets you go up and down with a selection and it shows a new set of lines around the entire model from the position that you have it set. And you can choose where you want to put those new lines. And basically that just gives you more edges and vertices to work with, which means that you can make the shape more complicated. Um, then there's also something called uh, extruding, which is where you select a particular face. And then when you have that face selected, you can extrude it out but when you extrude it out, you take this face, you make another one, and you pull it, which means that there's a whole other section of rectangle that comes with it. Because if you just took the face and you pulled it without extruding, you just take this, and it'll stretch this part out. Here, I can demonstrate a few. It's probably easier if I do. 
I know it's more of an advanced thing, but the visual helps. Extrude. I have this face here selected. Actually, no, I'll give you an example of what it looks like if I just pull it out. If I just pull it out, it's that. That's if I just pull it out like normal, just attaching the face. If I extrude it, however, I get a new section that I can work with. Whole new section. Now, there's one last tool that's very useful in this that I use all the time, which, if I can find it, it's called beveling. Basically, what it is is it takes a full section of edges in the face. And it, and it just duplicates that inside of itself. And you can choose how far in or out you want it to go so you can make new, um, more selections. Is there any way to round edges? To round edges? Yeah, that's with, um, so technically you can, but there's always going to be edges. It's just how, right, right, right. how many are there that you can't notice. Mm -hmm. What's up? Basically, you can add, you can add as many pegments as you can, so it just looks like a Pretty much. Whenever there's a sphere, when it, whenever you spawn a sphere, you can spawn many simple shapes to start off from. If you spawn a sphere, it's not a sphere. It's, it has enough edges to look, it has enough edges and faces to look like a sphere. However, there are certain rendering modes where you can make all your shapes look more malleable and form, like a, like organic form. Um, I don't recommend messing with those kind of renderings first, as beginners. Uh, I don't recommend trying to model things that are, that are organic, or have that kind of shape to begin with. Mm -hmm. When you're a beginner, you want to model something that looks man-made. It looks like it was made like an industry product, like something with sharp edges and... Point. Yeah, points. You don't want something biological or organic looking to start. How's it going, folks? What's the difference between Blender and Tinkercad? Tinkercad? Uh, I don't really know. I haven't used Tinkercad. So I couldn't really answer that question for you. I can look into it, though, if you're curious after this. So, okay. Now we're getting into the process needed to actually start a model. The first part of making a model has nothing to do with the computer software at all. The first part is drawing. Angled reference is something that's very, very important. Before you even touch the keyboard, before you touch the 3D modeling software, you need to do this if you want a serious attempt at a nice model. Basically, you need to think about all the different angles of your design and what you're going to need to lay out for it. I recommend not making a design with this to start. I recommend drawing out a design just freehand first, and then going back in and thinking about what it'll look like from all the angles you'll need. Um, you need to use your own judgment on how many angles you're going to need. Sometimes you can get away with as small as two, like this. You can see this dude from the front and from the side. And basically, what this does is if we take this image, this part of the image, and this part of the image, we can make planes in the 3D modeling software. Planes are basically just, they're just faces. They have no three-dimensional, like, aspects to them. It's just a flat face. And what we do is we take one of those, we spawn one of those in, comes down, that's the front. We take another one, we, come, we bring it in, we turn it 90 degrees so that it's perfectly opposite to this one. And we bring it down to intersect with this one. So like that. So they intersect. You take the one in the front and you apply this image to it. You take the one on the side now and you apply this image to it. So now, no matter what angle you're looking at this, you have a pretty good idea of where this guy's ear looks like on this side and what it looks like on the other side. You want to line these up perfectly. So when you make your reference that you're going to do this with, I recommend using grid paper or graph paper or um, lined paper if you have no other option. I use lined paper because I don't have grid paper lying around. 
Um, and basically, when you go back in to create this reference, you want to think about all the different lines and dots that will make this guy up. So for example, when you're starting at the head, take the line on the uh, top of your paper, make a dot, then come down incrementally. Next line. So the first dots appear. So the next dots are here. Here, 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 here. Make sense? So then, once you have that, you're going to shift over to the other side of the well, not the other side of the paper, but a little bit over to a blank spot in the paper. You're going to look at those lines, and you're now going to take all those points you just made, and you're going to redo them from the perspective of the side. And you're just going to make sure that all of the different parts line up with those dots made from the bottom over here. Because then, you get this perfectly in line with each other, and you can make that intersection of planes that creates the illusion the model and you look through it, which is funny because that's what you used to make it. Once that's there, you can actually model it. Because, yeah, you implement them as I uh, explained, planes, you set the texture so that way you can see it from any angle. Yeah, the reference makes it very easy to understand where to put stuff. So basically, um, when you have it in here, you take a, a primitive shape. You line it up as best as you can with a scale tool, and then you just kind of keep adding subdivisions, which are those lines all around stuff I told you guys about. Um, and then once you add one, you move it up to line up with a key part of your reference. And you just keep adding them until you get points pretty much for every point that you've drawn. And at that point, your model should start to look a little bit something like what you want it to. Once your model is complete, this is a little bit more advanced. I don't expect you guys to want to mess with this. I didn't want to mess with this until I pretty much had to. I hated this for the longest time. This was like the biggest thing in 3D modeling I couldn't learn for the longest time. So if you hate it, I'm with you. Or I was for a long time. And I understand. UV mapping, basically. If you guys ever took elementary school math, which I'm sure you did, you might remember certain worksheets that were shapes, all unfolded. And when they were all unfolded, it'd be flat. All the different sides that make up that shape unfolded. And the sheet would ask you, what shape is this? That's kind of what UV mapping is. Basically, the program takes all of the faces of your model and it unfolds them to a flat surface, a flat page. Once you have that flat page, you can export it from the program. Now, that flat page that you've created, you can organize those faces on that page to be in any spot on them that is more um, convenient for you later. The, uh, the software automatically knows where that face goes on your model. So the purpose of this flat page is so that you have a reference point for all the faces on your model in a 2D environment, which lets you draw over it. When you draw over this UV map of all of your faces, you can decide what each face is going to look like in terms of its texture. You draw like the material, the little details that don't need to be modeled, all that stuff you draw in on top of the UV map. And then when you put the UV map back into the uh, program, it has that raw data of where each face is, but now each face has a little drawing on top of it. And when you look at the model again, all the drawings and all the detail that you wanted in every specific place will be laid out on the 3D model because you drew over the 2D representation of it. That's a little example of what that means. For example, There it is. This is a model from an old Star Wars game I mod. This is usually what I use 3D modeling for. So that's a model, all textured, all finished up, all nice. This is that same model without a texture. There's like no detail at all, except for the basic shape. So texturing is actually very important. Texturing can add so much to a model. And there's a lot of detail in the model that you think is 3D that just isn't. And it is just a really clever use of the pen. 
So don't over model when you don't have to. You can draw that detail in if you need to. If it isn't a key part of the shape of your model. Here's some extra things I encourage you guys to look into. If you, after all this, if you want to take it even further, 3D animation is pretty cool. Uh, I have a very basic understanding of that. I'm not really crazy with that, but I, I know a little bit. It's, it's fun, and I assume I'd be better if I you know, put more time into it. Uh, using the skill to make mods for games is a lot of fun. Um, Particularly if you like early 2000s games like I do, a lot of them actually came out with mod tools because they were cool back then and they were like, hey, why don't you guys make some content for our game instead of us, you know, putting all the game behind the paywall incrementally. So, yeah, a lot of games from the early 2000s have mod tools that were released. I recommend that you look into those because a lot of it does have to do with 3D modeling. And one of the more basic mods that you can do in lots of old games like that is change models of characters and stuff like that. You can say, oh man, I'm playing Halo. What if I made the Master Chief, I don't know, Donald Duck? <laughs> you can do that. You can get a model of Donald Duck or you can make one. Just make sure that it's all lined up with the skeleton of the Chief and then you're just bashing all the enemies and shooting them with Donald Duck. Uh, 3D printing is pretty cool. I recommend getting a very basic understanding of 3D animation if you're going to 3D print characters and stuff like that, because then you can pose them and make them do cool stuff before you print them. And one of the most basic things you can do with models, and the least resource intensive, this is a cool thing you can do if you just want to get something nice out of your models that doesn't involve a whole lot of taking it and putting it somewhere else. Because a lot of what makes 3D modeling useful is taking it and putting it somewhere else. You take it, you put it in a game. You take it, you put it in a movie. You take it, you put it in a 3D printer. Not a whole lot comes out of the actual program other than the model. So what if you could have something out of the program besides the model? Well, that's where renders come in. Basically, renders are, you take the model, you put it in a little scene, you adjust the lighting in the 3D modeling uh, software, and you tell it, render. It makes a nice little image for you. Oh, I've, I've seen stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. basically it just takes it and it puts all the effects in to make it look nice. You can get a wallpaper out of it. That's probably, that, that's a nice little thing you can do without having to mess around with other, other programs. So that's the end of the presentation. I hope that you guys understand a little bit more about 3D modeling now. So now if we want to... Um, actually do a model. I can bring you guys through that process. If anybody wants paper to make a design with, you guys can come up here. I have lined paper. If you guys have lined paper, use it. I don't have that much of it. But if you need lined paper and you want to do it, I can give you guys some. And we're going to run through the basic creation of a model. I know that Peter wants to Print something out for the club, so we should probably discuss what we're gonna what we're gonna make. Yeah, yeah. So kind of the idea of this was uh, we worked together to come up with a singular <coughs> model, and a cool thing would be if it's related to the club. So I'll kind of give you an idea. It, it, it's something very basic. <laughs> I I kind of just created it online. I didn't use Blender itself, but just to kind of get the idea going. So half life characters. What was that? What? Half life. Oh, uh, well, check this out. This, this is what I, what I was kind of thinking. Oh, that's even better. Yeah, yeah. yeah so Thank you. I was thinking, like, computer technology club, and then we'd be able to print it. But this is very basic. Okay, this is just an idea to get the ideas flowing. Um, you could either print this. We do have a PNG of the logo. I'm not sure if there's any way to... I, I uh, per, yeah, personally... Per, what was that? Do we have... As we do the logo, yeah, I, I can get that going. Yeah. As we do would be preferred. I know. Personally, I think that letters might be a little bit too simple because of the, the side of it. Too simple? Yeah, a little bit too basic. I think. Oh, you think something more fun? A little bit. I, I think okay. maybe the logo with the the computer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think that might be a nice project to do. Cool. Uh, like think of it. Like maybe. we can put it to a vote and all, but yeah, yeah maybe even like a token. You know, like a flat token, and on top it's kind of raised uh, with the logo. Does that make sense? 
It would, it would actually be easier to just do the logo as, as an actual little thing. Well, the you logo could, you has could, you empty could do. space, so you wouldn't be able to. Well, unless it, well. We, we would interpret it as I Right, 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 right. Okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, mm. Okay, so this is the logo. Yeah, the computer in the middle. Right. So, oh, you were thinking we raise this. Yeah, I was thinking that we can model that. Make right. this a simple little thing. Like, we'd come up with a side for it to make it 3D. I see what you mean. Because the, my, my only gripe about doing text is that when you have text, the side of it isn't really anything. Yeah, yeah, right. right. That's, that's the only thing. If, if, you wanted, if, if text is what we want to do, though, that's totally fine. It's just... Right. You're not going to get much out of it in terms of the 3D, because it's yeah, not yeah. 3D. Like, with this... Like, you could add 3D to it, but it won't be that much. Right, right. Um, with this, I was kind of thinking, like, it's like a chip. No, a little coin. A little, little coin. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the white parts are raised. Mm -hmm. So okay. this would stay flat. All the red stuff mm -hmm. would stay flat. All the white stuff would be like kind of raised. And I know from the side it's something crazy, but it's a coin at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? Like you'd be able to feel the little text yeah. in the, you know? Wait, with sense? the text? Yeah, like this would be flat. This would be just a flat coin. And on top, think of like, we're placing like... You might be surprised. more complicated than either of the two things. I mean, that's why I, I yeah. didn't even bring that up. Um, but let's maybe go with like... I, I guess just the logo. Uh, yeah. Not the logo, actually. I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? So, the middle one? Oh, like this is just this kind of comes up? I see. What are you guys thinking? So, uh, to come up with a design, we're either saying. We use Oh we use the logo that we have, or we do something more related to just the name, so like you know, something like this. The logo. Logo, 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 logo. Okay. Everyone hates my logo. <laughs> uh, so you tell me what would be doable. And how can the, you get this in here? The the best option I think is taking the computer in the middle. And just the computer? Just the computer. For, for basic stuff right now, yeah, just the computer. Take the computer, and we're just basically going to interpret it as a, a design in 3D and model it. Okay. How I you think get that's the computer? A, how would you get it? We'd have to draw it. Oh, we'd have to draw it. Oh, okay. Which I can do if we want. I can make the, the reference. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Do you want to get people on Blender? You want yeah. To next? Yeah, sure. Um, if you guys... Want to participate in the, the design we're doing? I recommend that you guys go download Blender because I'm going to make the design real quick or a little reference. If you guys want to practice at making the reference, you're more than welcome. You can come up and get paper, but I'm going to make the little reference. And for those of you who want to participate in the model, I can give you guys all the reference once I have it set up. And um, could you show people how to download Blender real quick? Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's very easy to find Blender. You just go to Google. Just type in Blender download, because if you type in Blender by itself, you'll get food, Blenders. food blenders. <laughs> so you click the first result on Blender download for Google, and there it is. Blender. And if you have Steam and you want it on there, you can download Blender on Steam. Nice. Cool. Okay. So. Sure, the logo. Uh, what type do you want? I don't care. Doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. That, that's um, I'm not using the actual picture. I'm just using it as a reference.
Do you have to be good at 2D drawing, right? No. They think of the 2D drawing as an architectural context. You don't have to be good at pencil art. You need to be good at spatial relationships. So more math? Math in a geometry kind of freehand kind of way. Not in term not in a calculations way. <laughs> For a second, I looked up there and I saw my contacts. And I'm like, "What the heck are you doing with my contacts, Peter?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> you guys have a Discord? Yeah, 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 we do. For sure. Oh, you just sent it to me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm still looking up there thinking that's oh, yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I wonder why he's not sending it to me yet. No, yeah, yeah. I have it. Okay. All right, so. Got it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the only thing that we're probably going to have to make different about this is that, let's see. Thank you. The, um, the keyboard and the mouse are not going to be below it. They're going to be in front of it. So... If you guys need paper for this, you can come up and get it, like I said. If you want me to just make the design, I'm doing that right now, and I'll give it to everybody, and I'll show you guys how to implement it. We'll bring you through all that. What is the little circle thingy? Hmm? The black one? I don't know. What is the little, like, sphere? I right. called somebody in basketball. Hey. Ethan, do you know where the black little is? Alright, who's got the spear? Hand it over. Oh, wait. The spear? Oh, Nobody leaves alive without the spear. <laughs> the spear. Yeah. The sphere, the sphere. I'm consulting the beryllium I'm consulting. sphere. I'm consulting the spear. Wait, what's the spear? The sphere. Well, we had a little 3D model a little uh, that we were showing around. Yeah, it's excellent. We need to get that. Uh, uh, you guys 3D uh, these are all from the Step Center. So if you guys are interested, check them out. We have like really detailed ones. So like Captain America, too. Um, so this is a cool one. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Oh, yeah, we spoke to IT. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, you did? You can. What do you say? All that stuff, but we were able to get that done. What do you say? Um, so now we got like two, three, four more. Good work, computers. The full. So these are 3 you printed. Yeah. yeah, those are all 3D printed. If you guys want to check them out, um, just to kind of give you an idea of kind of what we'd be doing with our model. With our model? See, they released the. Our model. Oh, okay. okay. Our 3D model. Well, a 3D model. 